Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf, Vavakam Ayin Aleph. We are on the second line off the top of the Amid. The Mishnah spoke about a fellow who stole and did shechita on that stolen animal on Yom Kippurim, which generates a kares penalty, death by heaven, not through the bezin. And therefore, says the Mishnah, he will have to pay his penalties, so he has all those you know, financial liabilities. He has to pay the Dalad Vehei as opposed to a fellow who did shechita on Shabbos, which generates a misas bezin, bezin applies the uh, skila death penalty. There we say, no payment. Kimle bederabamine, because he gets the graver, the, the more severe punishment, which is the misa, of course, and therefore he's exempt from many financial liabilities. Okay, back to Yom Kippur, where the Mishnah says, Ganav, Vitavach Biemaki Purim, he pays Dalad Vehei. Why? Amri. So the Bnei Yeshiva wanted to know. It's true, he's not going to get killed by Bezdin. Amri. Amai, why is he paying? Nehi. Diktodaleka. There's no death penalty. There's no Misa. But Malkus, Miaika. The fact is that Bezdin will give him Malkus. Because when he did Shrit on Shabbos, he violated a lav. So when there is Malkus, we know for a fact, this is an accepted halacha, one cannot be you know, caught on two fronts, be given two different types of penalties, one personal, one financial. Either it's payment or it's Malkus. And here he gets Malkus, there's no payment to come along with that. Amri's answer was like this. Hamani, Rabbi Meir, he, our mission is following Rabbi Meir. Dharma, who says elsewhere, in the case of the, the Edom Zoyimim, who presented false testimony and were caught in their falsehood, they wanted to obligate a person to pay. It turns out they are falsifying. So, according to Rabbi Meir, they, they're doubly penalized. Dharma, like you, Michelle, they get both penalties. They get Malkas and they pay. Apparently, there's no contradiction. They're fully compatible, Malkus and payments. Yerub Meir says, the Gemara, okay, if so, the Gemara at this point figures that he will hold the same when it comes to Misa. We can apply Misa and Mame. So then, what about the other case when he did the Tavicha on Shabbos? Afilu Tavach B'Shabbos. Even though he gets Chi of Misa, he should have to pay. Chitemi perhaps will say, there's a difference. Lo'ikil Mishalim Islay. Going to Meir. Malkus and payments are compatible. But Mace Umishal and Leslie, but you can't get Misa and payment. So there's that distinction. Uh, the, the very severe Misa punishment doesn't uh, bring along with it any payments. And therefore, on Shabbos, he's Potter. On Yom Kippur, he's Chayef. Because on Shabbos, there's Misa, there's no payment. On Yom Kippur, there's no Misa, there is payment, despite the fact that he has Malkus. Veloy, Says the Gemara, really? According to Rabbi Meir, Tavicha on Shabbos does not trigger Dalad Vehei, but Tanya. We have a Brisa which seems to say otherwise. Gona Vatavach Bishabbos, he stole and did Shechita on Shabbos. Or Gona Vatavach, for the sake of Avaid, he was worshipping Avaid Azar, Or Gona Vashar Haniskal, he stole an animal who gored, who was slated for death. The animal slated for death, so it's Asr uh, Bahana. He stole that, but Tvachi, and he did Shechita. In all these cases, what happens? Yeah. Mishalom, Rabbi Chamisha, Dibar Meir, Kuntar Meir, it triggers Dalad Vehei. Chacham in Paitrin. Chacham say your pot. So clearly, Rabbi Meir says, even Tvicha on Shabbos generates Dalad Vehei. Amri, so the answer was, Bar Minodai, you can't prove anything from that price. That's a unique case where the Ganav, didn't actually, you know, personally do the malachah. He delegated it to somebody else. So since he himself is not liable to Misa, at least let him pay. We have learned a pshat, an explanation on that price. Amr Rabbi Yaakov, Amr Rabbi Yechon, Amr some say, Amr Rabbi Yermi, Amr Rabbi Shemalakish. That what? Rabbi Avin, Rabbi Yilo, these two, V'chol Chabros, and the entire group of Chachamim, 
Mishmei, the Rabbi Yechanan Amri, they quoted Rabbi Yechanan, who explained as follows. We're speaking about a unique case where he delegated the Shechita to somebody else. So he himself, the God of himself, did not perform the Shechita, did not do the Melacha, and will not get Misa, and therefore he's liable to Da'al Behe. But He asked somebody else to do the Shechita for him. Well, if, if so, why is the God of at all responsible? If somebody else does an Avera, I pay. How can Shimon violate and ruin and pay? Rashi brings the famous phrase, You can't hold the sender accountable for something that is emissary, that is representative. Did Why? The Gemara says, because When one is faced with a choice, who should I listen to? The master or the students? Of course, who listen to the master? In this case, Hashem. You should have followed your, uh, your good uh, judgment. Why is uh, the God of liable for Shimon's Shrita? Here it's different. Here's an exception. Here it's different. The Pasuk says there are two ways to trigger Da'ad Vahey, right? Either through selling or through Shrita. We compare the two contexts. Just like a sale, a transaction must have two parties involved a seller and a buyer. Likewise, the Shrita can be done as well by two people. So here is an exception, even if I did the Shrita by way of a Shliach Amchayev. That's one possible source. The Rebbe Shmuel Tana, going to Rebbe Shmuel's Brisa, we have a different source. Oy the Rabbis of Shliach, it says, Tvachay Oy Macharay. The Oy includes a Shliach as well. Tvachay Skiyat Tana, over there they learned a different source. The word Tachas, the Rabbis as a Shliach, because the Pasuk says, Chabisha Bakar Yisham Tachas Asher. Then again, Tachas Asher, the extra Tachas tells you that we expand it to even a case where it was done through a Shliach. On this, the Gemara has a Kash. Maske Flo Marzutra. So he asked, How can you have a case, a situation where the Ilu of the Ihu Lamechai, if the person himself would perform this Avera, this, you know, Shrita on Shabbos, of course, he would be putter from payment, as we explained. So now that he appointed somebody to do it for him, he can become chayev. How can a person empower, authorize somebody else to do something that he himself cannot do? Amalir of Ashi. So Rashi responded, no, that question doesn't really apply in this case. You know, the reason why when a person does shechita on Shabbos, he's not liable to Dalbe, it's not because he's not chayev. It's not because it doesn't trigger liability, it does. Ela the kamli medurabe mine. But it's just simply circumstantial. Since he's getting a misa through Bezden, we sort of do away with the payment. He gets the most severe punishment. But technically, you know, theoretically, this misa is a masachiv for which he's responsible. He has to pay the dal just technically we can't apply it. But if he does it through a shliach, in which case the sender is not getting the misa, the shliach is, so now the, the act can be attributed to the sender and triggers liability of Dalad Behe. And that's the Pshat Rameer. So again, if he does shkita on Yom Kippur, Kota Rameer has to pay because you can pay and get Malkus. Whereas on Shabbos, you can't pay and get misa. Unless he did it through a shliach. And that's the case of the price. Therefore, a says chayv. But the question is, so why did Rabbanon say potter in that case? He did the shchita by way of another person. My time the the patri. Why did Rabban exempt? He's not getting misa. Amri, the answer is man chachamim. Who exactly are these chachamim? It's actually the shita of Rabbi Shimon. The Amr told us, shchita shein a A shchita does not really accomplish permissibility. It doesn't make the flesh mutter. There's no purpose. That's not a shechita, lo yishma shechita. And therefore, in these cases, since the shechita doesn't really accomplish heter, doesn't permit the baser for consumption, it doesn't trigger a dalad vehe. Ask Sigmar, okay, let's go, through, let's, let's go down the list. Let's go through the cases one by one and see how this applies. Amri said the response was, so I fully understand why he does shechita for the Avedizara, or in a case where he does shechita on a shor that's Osir Bahana, 
because it's slated for stoning, because it you know attacked a person. Okay, that's fully any ruya because it's going to be asher ba'achil. So there's no dalat vei elo Shabbos. What about the other case? Shchita on Shabbos. True, it's a malacha, but the, the baser is mutar. It's a proper shchita. Shchita ruuyahi. This non, we have a mishnah. Shechet be Shabbos. We have a kipurim. If one does shchita on these days, hava bishem mischay benafshi. Even though it comes at a great expense, he gets chiyiv misa. But ultimately, the animal's mutar. Shchita sek sheira. So why is is he not chayiv dal vehi? Amri's answer was. That Rabbi Shimon will follow the sheet of Rabbi Yechon and Sandor, the Snan, who will see in a minute, will hold that if somebody you know, does a malach on Shabbos, that item, let's say he cooks something on Shabbos, that item becomes usur forever. And that explains why. When a shechita on a stolen animal is performed on Shabbos, there's no dalvei because the shechita shein ruya doesn't really accomplish anything. The bus are still us. Okay, let's see the mission. So look, Rabbi Chanan, Sandu the son, the son. We have three shechitas regarding a person who cooks on Shabbos. What are the consequences? What happens to the actual cooked food? Hamavashal b'Shabbos. So if one cooks on Shabbos, b'shoigeg yoichal. If he did it inadvertently. He could, even he himself, fellow cook that can eat it even on Shabbos. But if he did it purposely, uh, he shouldn't be eating it. He shouldn't, and others shouldn't eat it on Shabbos either. Divir Amir. Rabbi Daimer, a bit differently. If he did it then it should be eaten only after Shabbos. Don't, you know, have any benefit from the Melacha. But if he did it purposely, he should never eat it. Others can, but not him. Oh, here comes Rabbi Yechon Asander. Oh, he says, "Bishoygeig." If you did a bishoygeig, you oichel lamotzer Shabbos lachir. The item, the food, can be eaten after Shabbos, so there's no benefit from the, you know, Shabbos activity. Lachir, but only others can enjoy it. But he should never eat it. That's a penalty for what he did. But amaze it. But if he did it purposely, lo yeichel oilamis lo yloy lachir. Here it is. Person cooks food on Shabbos, but made knowingly, knowingly, the food becomes off limits for himself and anybody else. My time of Rabbi Sander, where is he coming from? What's his source? That an item with which a malacha was done on Shabbos, but made it is asr. The answer is as Rabbi taught a pischa de benesia at the entranceway to the Nasi's house. Says, Guard the Shabbos because it's holy to you. We connect Shabbos to something which belongs to Hegdish. Just like one cannot just partake in Hegdish property. Same exact with something created on Shabbos. Well, perhaps let's take it a step further. Let's compare it completely to Hegdish. Which is also even behind no, it can't benefit anything from the Hagdish item. Av Master Shabbos also behind no, perhaps when it comes to something done on Shabbos, you can't even have a no. Tamaloimar, no, we have an exemption. The Pasuk sort of limits this halacha. Koydeshi lochem, it's still somewhat yours to a certain extent. Tamaloimar lochem, which teaches us shalachem yeh should be somewhat yours. You can't eat it, but you can have a no. Yochalafil b'shegik, so perhaps we extend this even to a mistaken malacha. Tamalim chalel masyumas. The pasuk continues. On a desk great Shabbos, he gets misa. Clearly, we're speaking about a mezid. The mezid the matter the chovah the bishogig. The salacha only applies to a mezid which generates misa, but not shogig. Okay. So as the more pligi barab acha ravina. There's machlekes between these two amirayim. To what extent does Rabbi Yechon Sander forbid a maaser Shabbos? Chada or maaser Shabbos dayraisa. One says it's minat Torah. When a Torah, something cooked on Shabbos is Asr Ba'achila. The Chadamar, the other one disagrees. Ma'asr Shabbos is merely Asr the Rabbanon. Ma'an da Madar Raisa, the one that says Madar Raisa, well, Kedamar, as we just presented from the Pasuk, like Kodesh. Um, Ma'an da Madar Rabbanon, whereas the other shit that says it's merely the Rabbanon. Amar, he says like this. Amar, Kra. Because the Pasuk says, Kodesh, who? Shabbos is holy. Who Kodesh? The Shabbos itself has Kedusha, but ve'e Ma'asav. 
Kodesh as opposed to something created on Shabbos, it doesn't get that Kedusha, that sort of you know, separation. It's not us. So when I told it's not us, only the Rabbanu. Now let's just go back a second. So it's all well. If you say Amas Shab is Asam Natur, Amatullahi, that explains that original discussion, that original Brahsa, Patri Rabban Rabban say when a person shechts on Shabbos, it's a Masa Shabbos, it's also Bahila. Thereby making it a an ineffective shita, a shita shain the ruya, which hasn't accomplished anything pertaining to the Basar, which according to Rab Shimon is not reckoned with, and therefore there's no doubt behave payment. Very good. Got the whole package. But according to the other opinion, that the Isra of a Master Shabbos is Mili Midrabonim. So, why in a case where a person does Shkita on Shabbos, a Ghanav does Shkita on Shabbos, why is he potter from Daldei? We're not Torah. This item is fully permissible. It's a Shkita Ruya. And if it's a proper Shkita, it should trigger Daldei. Am I Patri Rabbonim? You're right, says the Gemara Sha'ara. When the Rabbonim say you're potter, it's not going on the Master Shabbos. It's going on the other two examples cited in the Brisa. We stole an animal that shchita, it's shchita avay the zara, or the shahar niskel. In those two cases, you're potter because the item is totally asr bahano, which makes it a shchita sheni ruya. Okay, so bottom line is, according to Rameer, shchita on Yom Kippur triggers dal despite the fact that there is malchus, but on Shabbos it wouldn't because there's misa. Unless it was done through a So why do Rabbanon say Potter? Well, the Gemara figured because we're going like Rav Shimon. Shkita on Shabbos is Asr. Doesn't make the boss a mutter. And therefore it's an unaccomplished Shkita, ineffective Shkita, which doesn't trigger the al That's only if you say a Master Shabbos is Asr, Minatura, as per that Shkita. But if you say it's Minatura Rabbanon, so Minatura is really a proper Shkita. Why is he potter from Dalvei? Answer The answer is, you're right, he's chayiv in Dalvei. When the Rabbanon say potter, it's going on the other cases where it's really asr bahano, like shkita lavei de zara and shar Now, even on those, Rameer says, you pay Dalvei. Rameer disagreed on all three accounts. Shkita Shabbos, shkita lavei de zara, shkita shar And the question now is, fine, we've addressed Shabbos. Because he holds even shkita on Shabbos. It's still, either it's mutter, uh, or he doesn't know like Rab Shimon that a, uh, in order for it to be considered a shkita it has to accomplish something so that's good but what about the other two items he worshipped the idol as he's shechting it he did a shkita on an animal which is slated for Misa which is Asr Bahana for Abmer Amai why is he paying in the case of Shechad Abad Zara what's the kasha ki even the Shechad Purta because as soon as he starts a bit of that shkita Asra that is enough to be considered Avodah Zara. He's worshipping the idol. And it's called Ziv Chemesim, Rashi says. It's worthless. It's also Bahana. So Idach, when he continues and completes that Shechita, which is certainly required to trigger the payment of Da'ad Vahey, Rashi brings the Gemara later, V'tvachai Kuloi Be'inan. We need the full Shechita to trigger Da'ad Vahey. So as soon as he starts, the first percent, it's already a Ma'isat Avodah Zara. Asr Bahana. So when he's done, Either when he continues and finishes, completes the shechita Yisra Anahu, the item is totally asr ba'ano of Eloi Demar Katavach, and no longer belongs to its owner. Right? What's the point of owning? Accessibility. Usage. Enjoyment. If it's asr ba'ano, it's off limits. It doesn't relate to its owner. So this Ganav didn't really do shechita on something which had an owner. It's ownerless at that point. Says the Omar Rava, you're right, typically you're right. But here it's an exception. But Omar was speaking that the, the Ganav stipulated, that I'm only worshipping the idol. It's only going to be considered a mass of a Vidizara at the end, the last drop of the Shechit. So at that point, you know, when he's completing the Shechit, he's still shechting the owner's animal. And therefore, he's chayiv dal vehe. Next question: What about the shahar niskel? If it does shkita on a shahar niskel, same question. Isur anon, you know, it's totally asr bahano. We love the merkat tavach. It's ownerless. Amar Rava, hachav my skin. We're speaking about the following case. Kigayin shemasrei l'shemer v'hizak be'shemer. 
There was a whole story, a whole history behind this, this case. A fellow owned an animal, gave it to somebody to watch, to Hashemer. Take good care of my animal. Vihizik Vishemer. And the animal attacked somebody under the shamer's care, under the shamer's watch. Vuad Vishemer. And he became habitualized, meaning he did it over and over again, and he was liable to Misa because he killed so many people. Vinigmar Dina Vishemer. And while still in the shamer's care, the Bezin issued that death verdict onto the uh, ox. Okay? Now at this point, can the shamer just quickly return it to the owner and say, okay, here's your animal back? Yeah, you can do that. For a mayor, a mayor says that in our case, over here, we'll pay dollars over here. So we'll look at So first we have to know, he holds of Rabbi Yaakov's halacha. Rabbi Yaakov is the sheet that we had way back, who holds uh, that even at this late point, the shamer can choose to return the actual item to the owner. Can't take your animal back, despite the fact that it got really messed up under his watch. It became Asr Ba'anna. Here, take it back. It's yours. That's number one. It's the first premise. Second premise, Usvir Lek Reb Shimon. We're going to go like Reb Shimon now. That holds that something which can bring to value has value. We'll see in a minute. Okay? The Gemara explains itself, actually. So may will hold like Reb Yaakov and Reb Shimon. So we look at Rabbi Yaakov. He holds like Rabbi Yaakov. Firstly, Dama who says, "Af misha nigmar dinay hechziroi shemer lebala muxer." Even after the verdict, the gemar din of misa on the shor, the shemer can turn around and return it to the owner. So, in a way, this animal carries some value to the shemer, although it's valueless to the owner because it's asr ba'na. But the shemer can sort of get away with it. He can get out of paying for the lost animal by returning this animal. So, to him, to the shamer, it carries some value. Because if this animal disappears, he has to compensate for the animal. But now he can just take the animal and return it. That's first of all. So it has some element of value to the shamer. And likewise, Rabbi Meir holds like Rabbi Shimon. Even though something doesn't really have inherent value, but if it can cause, it can bring about value, we look at it like it has value. Where do we find Rabbi Shimon? This none. Rabbi Shimon Aymer. Kachem Shechayev Bachru Yuson Chayev. So, although we know that when one steals an animal from Hegdish, there's no uh, kafel payments because it's not your equal, it's not really Eyo. But suppose a fellow was Magdish's animal and he took responsibility for that carbon. For instance, he says, Hare Allah Oila. This is going to be upon me to bring this as an Oila. So he's responsible. If it gets lost, he has to fill in for it. At this point, if a Ganav steals this animal from me, is he Chayev Kefal? Yes. Even though technically the item is Hagdish. But it pertains to me. I'm a player. I have a say in the matter. I'm responsible for the animal. So there's an element, an aspect of ownership here. Kachim shechayiv b'charuyus, and if it's a carbon that I'm responsible for, chayiv. If you steal it from me, you're chayiv. Why? I'm apparently. We're working with this premise that davar hagoyim lemamik kumamidami. When something causes, something can bring about. Something has the potential to bring monetary consequences. It's greater on the moment. In this case, if this animal is lost, I have to pay for it. So it has some value, to, has potential value in my eyes. Kimami dummy. That's considered, there's an element of, of an aspect of ownership there. I have something in it, I have an interest in it. So, how does it solve our issue? Let's backtrack a second. The Kasha was sure that attack that was um, written off by the Besan, Shah Haniskal, it's meant to be killed. Asurbano. Faganov steals it and does shrita, he pays Daldvehe. Why? It's valueless. It's ownerless. Nobody has an interest in it. Oh, it's talking about that a shimer. What was that fault? Because he was watching the animal while this episode happened. So even if the Gemara did where it's technically Asurbano, but the shimer still has some he has a vested interest in this animal. Hold on, he must hold on to it in order to return this animal to the owner. 
But as soon as he does that, he's absolved. It's Gerim the Mammon, so it's considered somewhat his. There's an aspect of, of ownership here. And therefore, if the Ganav steals it and does Shechita on that, he pays Dal Vehei. Because it is considered as though, as though he took something away from a person. So although it doesn't have direct value, the item itself is Asr Bano, but in a roundabout way, it brings value. And therefore, it's considered like something which is owned and triggers Dal Vehei. Amar of Kahana. So Rav Kahana says, Amrit al-Shmata k'med Rav Zvid I presented this whole explanation to Rav Zvid that when the Mishnah says a person does Gneva and Tvich and Yom Kippur even though the, uh, the animal is Asr so it has no value and now it's, it's Asr Bachil but we're going like Rameir Rameir says even though you get Malkus You'll still have to pay. But like, how can you say, Mimot says, How can you say the mission is going like Rameir and not like Rab Shimon? Because according to Rab Shimon, Ashkita uh, Kippur, which is Eina Ru'i, which doesn't generate is, uh, you know, uh, permissibility on the, on, the, on the flesh, is not, not considered a proper Ashkita. How can you say it's going like Rameir, but like Rab Shimon, but is safe, and the mission itself, we have Rab Shimon, and the mission Eil. He disagrees on, you know, on the other aspects over there with the. Um, person who shechted on Lavi de Zara, right? And this the last case is the Mishnah. I'm sorry, the case of the uh, Shechet, which turned out to be a treifa, the, sh- the animal was treifa, or Chulun Bazara, where it's, you know, it's Asr. That's a Shechita, it doesn't really accomplish anything. On those, he says, you put, point of Mishnah, Mechlal, let's make a dik. Apparently, in the other cases of the Mishnah, which includes the case of Shechita on Yom Kippur, Mechlal de Bukula Masis and He agrees that you pay Dal of Oh, um, he said, no, 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 you're misreading the statement of Rav Shimon. Lai, mechlaud, the moide, but the mechlaud, the fool, the club. Although Rav Shimon says, I'm exempting only these two as opposed to the others, he means to contrast these two, Trefa and the Chum Bazar, which is Asr Bachila, to the case where a person has shchitl, not for the sake of consuming the meat, rather to use it for medicine, you know, medicinal purposes, or to feed it to the club. So the Chiddush there is, even though it's not meant for personal consumption, it's still called the Shechit Ru'uya, because it's technically mutter to be eaten. And there, Rabbi Shimon agrees, it triggers Dalvei. But in the case of, of Yom Kippur, he'll disagree because, um, you know, whether because it's not Roy Lachilo, because, or more simply, because uh, it, it triggers Malkus. And there's halacha, you don't, uh, you don't get Malkus and pay. So bottom line, when a person steals on a weekday, does a tricha, pays dal v'hei. Even doing it through a, a shliach would generate dal v'hei. We have uh, three sources for that. Tel shchita on Shabbos, it's certainly not going to trigger dal v'hei, whether it's because kim le b'durab there's mis involved, or because uh, like Rav Shimon, the basur is not mutabachila, which is a prerequisite for dal v'hei. He's going to the Rebbechon Asandor, that right, that Master Shabbos also Bachil. What about Shkita Yom Kippur? So the prevalent shita is that there's no payment, except the quarter of Meir. Even though there's Malkus, there's payment as well. Okay. What about Shkita Lavi de Zora? What about Shkita of Asher Haniyaskel? So. Um, Yeah, there would be no Dal Vehe there, but uh, except in a case where he worked it out that um, that it's, it was still owned, considered uh, you know an owned animal at the time of the Shechita, in which case it triggers Dal Vehe. Continues the Gemara. Ganav Mishal Ave V'Tavach Mocher. So one steals his father's animal, does Shechita, and then his father passes away and he becomes a Yairish. Mishal says that will have to, um, you know, compensate his brothers for their portion of the Dalad Vahim. But I mean, he asked the question of Rav Nachman.